Hi, my friends. Let's continue talking about rejection. It's such a big subject. So I wanted to break it down a little bit. Um, I want to talk about addictions concerning rejection and relationships. It's an interesting topic. So rejection is, I'm going to tell you how you feel when you are rejected. You are, it means that you are excluded from, from a group, from information, from communication. Um, it's um, being excluded from emotional intimacy. And when you feel these things, your brain tells you that you are rejected. And the other day I started speaking about it and I want to tell you that when you are a rejected soul, it's, it's wounds in your soul, in your system, in your belief system also. You're thinking in a rejected way and you interpret a lot in this life through the eyes of rejection. Sometimes people are not re rejecting you that much as you feel. I mean, if you're very vulnerable, you even feel rejected if you are tapping a little dog, the neighbor's dog, and the dog is running away and you feel rejected by that. Or if you go to the movies with your friend, you pick the film, a movie, and your friend doesn't like that movie, if you're very sensitive and feeling rejected, you, you, will, you will experience that as a big rejection. Or if you make food to somebody and they don't maybe like that kind of food. Simple things that are like normal, but for a reject, rejected person, it's more crucial because a reject is rooted in our soul system and it goes so deep that it twists our thinking about ourselves. We think that we have to live up to something special to be loved because we don't understand that people can possibly love us just the way we are. For example, with your body, you think you need to have a perfect body you need to look a certain way to be loved. You need to dress a certain way. I'm not saying it's not good to, to, to exercise and, and look your best. But still, if that is the motive that you need to be super perfect, you like, you know, running to the gym every day to look your best because you think that no one will want you if you don't have all those muscles or you are not as fit as you want to be, nobody will love you. And that is a lie. That is a lie because to love somebody is about the inner person. It's about who you are. And when you don't love yourself, you can't love others and you can't receive love from others either. You don't understand love, how it works. You think it's about outward things like your looks, because your self-esteem is so low uh, and when you're in a relationship with rejection wounds you can for the first you will pick people that are wounded because you may be not picking them but you feel more home with people who are uh, having obstacles and struggles in their lives and also have low self-esteem because you don't see your own worth. So you actually uh, choosing a partner through your wounds and your low self-esteem. And God has another level for you. He wants you to grow up to maturity. He wants you to be whole so you can find or attract the right person that he has meant for you. And when you are not whole, you will find people who are also wounded. Wounded people find each other and then they will, are hurting each other more. 
so I've been through that circle to be personal. I had very low self-esteem. I felt very rejected as a child of many reasons. I was mocked in school and I was not a popular girl when I was younger. And, and then I was like, you know, I didn't feel worthy of anybody. So I, I didn't pick anybody, but I just, you know, I, I was drawing attention to me from the wrong type of people. Also friends who were very wounded came into my life. So it was like a dysfunctional thing where you feel more at home with people who are, are lacking stuff, who are a little bit um, wounded themselves. And then if you end in the relationship with that person with your low self-esteem, because you don't know your standard in life, you don't know what you are worth, and maybe you are settled for less with something that is really, really bad, uh, something that is dysfunctional, and then you keep hurting each other. And that is not the God idea relationship. But you see, when you have rejection wounds and are in this, this uh, love affair, relationship or friendship, you very quickly get attached to those people and it creates a soul tie, an ungodly soul tie that is very destructive where you can't let go, even if you should be with a friend or a partner that is actually not good for you, maybe even mean to you, and you suffer in that relationship, but because you have a rejection wound, you can't let go. You can't let go because you are so rejected that it creates an addiction to that person like an invisible chain. So the whole thing is dysfunctional and destructive. And the enemy is taking advantage of these wounds. There are rejection wounds that we are being, um, that has happened to us, for example, as kids or youths, where we've been abandoned, abused, uh, you know, a lot of things that happens when you are feeling rejected or are uh, getting that wound, that root system. But there is also a spirit of rejection that the enemy use into your wounds to make you feel more rejected than you actually are. He's twisting your way of thinking because when you are rejected, you have a, a, a little strange belief system about what you pick up when you come into a room and you're jealous when you are rejected and you're in a relationship, you struggle with jealousy because you're so insecure and have so low self-esteem. So it creates a lot of problems. You're suspicious, you have paranoia, you have fear, and you are stuck in a bad relationship. You know you deserve better, but you can't manage yourself to get out because you have this big Grand Canyon in here of rejection. So you cannot really receive the love God wants you to have or are able to love other people uh, and love yourself. So the inner wounds that you're carrying, they are screaming at you all the time. All the time, those wounds are dominating your soul your way of thinking, your emotions, you're vulnerable, you, you misunderstand people, you twist how they see you, the way they talk, you feel abandoned. And what they, you often do when you are rejected, you very fast, if you're dating somebody, you really fast reject that person because you're so scared of being rejected yourself. And that also can happen to friends, friendships, where you, you need friends and you meet somebody and then you just quit or ghost out those people because you're scared of them leaving you one day. You're certain that 
nobody's gonna love me nobody's gonna like me when they know who i am they're gonna leave me so i better reject that person before that person reject me so your feelings becomes your belief system in this life and it's all twisted and then you build up this invisible wall where you're protecting yourself you can be like kind of social and you seem open to people but you're not open at all when you reject it you don't give your innermost heart because you can't you have an invisible wall and behind that wall you're just lonely and you suffer a lot suffer a lot so often people who are rejected have been through some form of abuse it can be physical abuse mentally abuse emotionally abuse um, you know uh, uh, different kinds of abuse that has happened to you that creates these wounds and rejected people are very often self-focused they misunderstand you they think the worst when you are meaning nothing bad they twist it the enemy is using that wound and that low self-esteem so when that person are listening to you he, he or she is misunderstanding what you are saying so when you say something on your on that way those words from your mouth are being twisted when they come to the mind of a, a rejected person he's very self-focused he's living or she's living here only thinking about her emotions analyzing uh, paranoid feeling hurt or living in a selfish way you can say that so um yeah it's it's uh it's a way out you know uh many people are also addicted to drugs they're addicted to different kinds of things like a substitute for uh, not feeling so bad it's like if you're using drugs it's like a self-medicated thing or maybe sex or uh, addictive to people you can't let go um, that all comes from a root of rejection and you never feel good enough you never feel pretty enough you never, you know, you're always looking down at yourself because you have such low self-esteem. You have this negative thought about yourself. Um, but God has a way out. God has a way out for you. If you cooperate with God, I know it seems impossible if you are rooted in this belief system of rejection you have no clue how you're going to get out how you're going to get healed how is that possible if you've been living like that from you were a kid and you're a grown up now you can't understand and see any hope in you coming out of those dysfunctional ways of thinking about yourself and it isolates you even if you're lonely you maybe stay lonely because you have this thing this thinking that nobody wants you nobody loves you you're not good enough they will leave you one by one and i'm telling you we all being are being rejected from time to time in this life it's impossible to live on this life journey without any rejection I have been through a major healing process with God for many years ago where he healed my rejection wound and it was pretty big and you know when you have that wound you have a survivor mentality upon that wound that you learn to live with that wound maybe you don't even know that you are carrying that wound and but there's something that will trigger that wound from time to time in your life and it will create it can create almost an anxiety attack a shock a breakdown and you don't even know it that you have that wound that big that 
if if a certain situation that is a, a trigger for your rejection happen in your life where somebody close to you all of a sudden dump you leave you it can trigger something from you were a little kid and it can get a major breakdown in your life which which can be really really scary but i believe that god will give you a breakthrough when you have a breakdown sometimes and i want to be a little personal because i've been rejected i had a wound of rejection for many years of my life i had very low self-esteem uh, i didn't know what i was worth until god started healing me emotionally and i used so much time in the word of god and I feeded my thoughts hours and hours every day for years to, to start to change my way of thinking about myself. Because if you have been experiencing bad things most of the time in your life, it's easier to believe the bad stuff that people have done to you. And then you think of yourself very low because you have been experienced abuse, for example. But God can change our mind completely and he can heal our wounded emotions. So we started to start slowly to think about ourselves as he thinks about us. That's where the healing kicks in. But it's a process and you have to be patient about your, your healing process. And, and what God also does is that he can allow you to experience scary stuff when you are rejected. He can allow you to even be more rejected for a little while, like I said the last time. He can, he can allow you to stay, to stand in a very scary situation where he's watching you, he's there. Maybe you don't feel it. You don't know that he's there. You think you're all abandoned by God too. Because when you were rejected, you have a problem understanding that God can really, really love you. You read it. You know it from the word of God, but you don't actually believe it. Because you're not living by that love, that knowledge about that you are completely loved by God. Unconditionally. That you don't have to do anything. I see rejected people who are in ministry, they're doing so much all the time. They're running around like crazy and they're trying to be like a good son or a good daughter for God to please him because they have this rejection wound and low self-esteem. So they think they have to earn his love, but that is not true. You see, God will never love you more if you run around and are doing a lot for him. He's not going to love you more. He's going to love you exactly the same, no matter what you are doing or not doing for him. Because you're his son. You're his daughter. Like the prodigal son who were out there doing foolish stuff. And he find out that I want to go home to my father's house. And he was treated like a royal son. That is a picture of how God is looking at you and me, regardless of what we are doing. If we stumble, we don't have to be perfect because we are never going to be perfect. We are people. We're human beings. We stumble with our mouth, with our actions, and we do foolish things sometimes. But when a rejected person are doing wrong things he is so harsh to himself that he can't receive love from christ or people because he needs to feel or she needs to feel that she can earn it and in christ it's mercy you don't have to earn it you already got it once and for all he paid the price for all your rejection all your foolishness all your sins so you are so valuable and you need to see that value. That is what's going to change your thinking about yourself. When you feed your mind with the word of God and you use quality time 
And when I was, um, like I said last time, I'm going to repeat myself a little bit, in that rejection situation with all these people rejecting me at the same time, one year, I thought I was going to die. And God said to me, I'm healing you now. And then he said, I'm healing you. If you can manage to stand in this situation where you so rejected and see yourself through my eyes, you will never feel rejected again. Even if people are going to reject you, you will not fall down by it because you will always see yourself in me, how I look at you. And that is my safe place today. And I'm so calm. I'm so peaceful. I have my safe place here. And I don't know when he actually healed me. It was a process. I was cooperating with the Holy Spirit every day. I, I was turning to God, to the Word of God, to really seek healing for my rejection wound. And it was hard in many ways because I was experiencing rejection during that phase of my life where I was not quite healed, but I was on my way. But still, I had to, by faith, believe that what God says about me is the truth. It's not what I feel right now. And my feelings are changed now. My thinking is changed and even if people have rejected me from, you know, now and then, I actually don't care that much because I'm so tapped into God. My new normal is to live so close to the Father. He brings healing into my life. The Father's love. When you know your worth, when you know how much He loves you, that He's your daddy, that you are His daughter and His son for real, and you start living your life after the word of God and believing that you have that incredible worth, something will happen to you. You will start changing on the inside. You get stronger, you get more peaceful and you're not reacting and you're not judging situations as wicked as you did before. You're not feeling abandoned if people are not talking exactly with you in a room with 10 people. And maybe there are five minutes when nobody is actually talking with you. Before, I used to feel very uncomfortable and I wanted to leave because I couldn't stand feeling that, no, feeling that feeling where nobody wanted to say something to me when I was in a party or something. But now I'm relaxed. I'm safe and I'm, I'm, I'm in peace. I know who I am. I know that I'm worth everything God says I'm worth. So I'm, I'm, I'm living there inside of me. My life is not like a roller coaster anymore. I'm not addicted to, 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 to wrong people in my life. When I started to change from the inside, my circle started to change. My thinking started to change. My, my choices of people started to change. I was att attracting more whole people into my life. And other types of, you know, friends and, and, and people who are strong and whole. Because I was getting whole on the inside. You attract how you see yourself. You attract who you are on the inside and you can't fool your soul, not even as a saved person. Because I don't believe that you can be all healed if you just go one time to the front and somebody, bam, pray for you. And then you healed from your rejection wounds. It's not possible. Something can start there, but it's a process where you need to renew your rejected way of thinking. And that is not going to happen overnight. You need to cooperate and work on yourself together with God. So he is building our self-esteem in him. We're not going to be narcissistic or believe that we're all that and be pumped up in some crazy, selfish, ego, pride thing. But we're going to go to the source, God, and let him 
mirror our lives so we can see who we really are and start believing it. And then you will not end up in relationships that are soul ties or addictions. You will see very quickly those people I can have in my life. I'm on another level. I used to be there, but I'm not there anymore. I'm made whole. He will make you whole, my friend. He made me whole, so he's going to make you whole too. And I just want to pour hope into you today. Hope for your soul and your emotional hurt. God is going to restore everything that was broken in your life. It doesn't matter if it's been broken for 30, 40 years. He's going to rebuild everything that was broken and build your foundation up again through his word. Okay? So, my friends, tap into the word of God. It's the only source for healing. And spend time in his word and spend time with Jesus. And slowly, when you have patience, he will heal your wounds of rejection. He will take it out. And you will not live a dysfunctional life. You will live a great life. A great life with a good standard. You will have greatness over you. And you will attract greatness. And you will be able to help so many people because you've been there. You have empathy. You know. And God is going to use you where you were wounded. He will take you back to those people. And you will pour oil over them because God healed you. That's how it works. God bless you, my friends. I speak to you very soon. Have a fantastic evening in the presence of God. God bless you. Amen.